Our Christian Coach presents Aliko Dangote's encounter with Archbishop Benson in Daoza's story. How Benson and Daoza blessed and prophesied on young Aliko Dangote. Before we get into this video, please help us by clicking on the like button. Also, be sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss our future videos. Alhaji Aligo Dangote, who is normally called Dangote, need not to be introduced, for we've heard about his businesses. He's the worthiest black man. Dangote is one of the greatest of all time successful African entrepreneur. The GOAT. We're not talking about Mercy or Ronaldo, but Dangote, the GOAT, an abbreviation for greatest of all time. Nigeria and Africa have lots of business gurus, yet they can't match Dangote. His level is different when it comes to business and entrepreneurship. Before we continue with the story, how Archbishop Benson and that was a blessed and prophesied on young Aliko Dangote. It would be very handy to have a basic background knowledge about their personalities. Let's start with Dangote. Aliko Dangote was born on April 10, 1957 in the then northern region, Kano State. Aliko Dangote was born to Mohamed Dangote and Maria Sanusi Dantata an ethnic houser from Kano State. Dangote showed his love for business and entrepreneurship by selling sweets even in primary school. Oh yes, at primary school he was doing business. Children are likely to live up to what they believe in it. Dangote has said, I can remember when I was in primary school, I would go and buy cartons of sweets, the candy, and I would start selling them just to make money. I was so interested in business, even as at that time. As a teenager, he began to work for his uncle, Sanusi Dantata, and it was said of him that he served faithfully and diligently. In 1977, and after his 20th birthday, he approached his uncle and told him about his plan to establish a business outfit which would trade in cement, sugar, rice, pasta, salt, and other products. His uncle provided him with a loan of about $1,000. That's Five hundred thousand naira, as at that time, but gave a covet to Dangote. In other words, he want him to return the loan within a deadline of three months. This was a popular practice, as at that time, you can get a loan and pay within three months. Gave me a loan of which I was grateful, and uh, I paid back in three months. Dangote relocated to Lagos in June 1977, the Commercial Nerve Center of Nigeria. He began to travel around Nigeria to build business relationships and also develop a strong distribution network for quick and efficient delivery of his products. Miwa, Benny, formerly known as the City of Blood, was then experiencing a great revival through the ministry of Benson and Daoza. A Benny man who was established as a young Christian in the Assemblies of God and now pastored the Church of God Mission International with hundreds of branches throughout Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Benson Andrew Zendawaza was born on the 11th September 1938 and passed on to be with the Lord on March 12, 1998. He was affectionately called Papa or Baba by his followers or congregants. 
and Daoza was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher who founded the Church of God Mission International. The church has its headquarters in Beni City, in the state. He was popularly known for his robust faith. T.L. Osborne said he's the African greatest ambassador of faith to the world. With the help of his spiritual father, Reverend S. Jean Elton, and also established strong links with a number of pastors during his Bible school days in America and after Bible school, he continued to establish them all. The pastors include Reverend Harry Westcott, Gordon Lacey, Jim Barker, T.L. Osborne and among others. T.L. Osborne first responded to Benson and Daoza's letter in 1962. Subsequently, a solid relationship was established over the years resulting in Osborne's visit with his wife, Daisy, to Benny on a few occasions, either for his crusades or specifically to Indawaza's church. Of all the visits, however, one specific visit in the late 1970s was very unique. T.L. Osborne and his wife had stayed late ministering at the Miracle Center of Church of God Mission, just opposite the airport. They therefore went late to catch their flight to Lagos, which was supposed to be a connecting flight from Johannesburg to France, England, and then the USA. By the time Indosa took his girls to the airport, they were told that the last flight for the day was overbooked. Not one seat was available. The passengers had boarded and the flight about to take off. Not only that, the jetliner had begun to taxi towards the runway. Benson and Daoza's new Mercedes spat towards the tarmac and sprang to a halt in front of the plane. Benson and Daoza came out and waved at the pilot frantically. The plane stopped and the steps were lowered as the pilot came down to know what the issue was. And Daoza began, I have two of God's important servants who must go to Lagos. But we are loaded to capacity. Every seat is full, said the captain. Never mind, let me on board. They all know me, the Sea Redemption R, and that was a TV weekly program. Let me talk to them. The man of God mounted the steps, walked down the crowded aisle. The passengers were annoyed. He prayed silently believing for the right words. As he returned to the front, he turned round, facing the passengers and started, Excuse me, friends, I have two of God's important servants in my car. They must go to Lagos today on this plane. Two of you will get off now so God's servant can board. God bless you. He waited a minute. No one moved. The silence showed annoyance by the impatient passengers. Some pretended to be asleep and others, it seems, were praying. And Daoza slowly walked the aisles again. As he approached the rail, a young man rose from the back of the plane and asked the person sitting next to him to get out. Yes, said Indawza, pointing. You can go tomorrow. You can travel later, he said, pointing to the other man. They both gathered their belongings and proceeded from the plane. Benson and Indawza stopped the first man in the eyes of the plane. He asked him, young man, what is your name and what do you do? My name is Ali Godan Gote, and this is my assistant, the young man replied. I'm a trader, a businessman. Impressed, 
Benson and Dawoza responded. The world will get up for you. The mostly Christian passengers responded, Amen. My God will bless you. God will take you and your business beyond Africa and bless you beyond measure. Just before descending the steps, and I was attained and raised his hands with tears in his eyes. Praise the Lord and bless the remaining passengers for their patience. They all broke out in spontaneous clapping. See your redemption hour this Sunday evening, he said. They clapped as T.L. Osborne and Daisy Osborne boarded for the subsequent flight. The world has since stood up for that 20 something years old man. Today, Aliko Dankote is the richest billionaire in Africa and presently one of the richest in the world. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20. God bless you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment.